all hope that the vape law gets passed. When it comes to consumer nicotine products, suddenly flavors become an issue. There's no basis in fact, it's just to destroy the industry, that's all. I don't want anybody to go through what my brother and I went through watching my mother die. In this episode, we review the Asia Harm Reduction Forum. The forum, which was held in October, was the fifth annual session and not only included a lineup of consumers, experts, and politicians, but was also the launch pad for the Manila Declaration and research from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, as well a presentation of the CAFRA white paper, The Subversion of Public Health, Consumer Perspectives. Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we are going to review the Asia Harm Reduction Forum that took place in Manila in October. We have a lot of ground to cover, as you can tell, so let's get to it. The fifth Asia Harm Reduction Forum took place on the 28th of October in Manila, Philippines. The theme for this year was Integrating Harm Reduction in Asian Policies, a major win for public health. In India, among other professionals, tobacco harm reduction virtually did not come into their vocabulary or awareness. When it comes to consumer nicotine products, suddenly flavors become an issue. We have hope. The vape law is now here. It is time to act. Hope is no longer enough. Now is the time to act. According to the report, Tobacco Harm Reduction, or Using Safer Nicotine Products, offers new choices to millions of people worldwide. There were presentations from consumers and researchers alike within the theme. Presenting their research entitled Smoking as a Risk Factor to Other Diseases, a Meta-Analysis, Dr. Rosana Ulab. It's an honor to be among the rock stars of harm reduction, to be given a chance to be exchanging and sharing with you knowledge about harm reduction. The first research paper was presented by Dr. Rosanna Ulep of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines on the topic of smoking as a risk factor to other diseases, a meta-analysis. According to the Global Adult Tobacco Survey of 2009, the Philippines is one of the countries with the largest percentage number of smokers among its adult population, with 28% averaging around 17 million. This research compares smoking to other non-communicable diseases and the harm reduction activities that mitigate those risks and harms. There is still work needed to be able to significantly affect the overall mortality rate of tobacco smoking in the country. It is also important to note that there is a lot of improvement on the country's side in the recent year in handling tobacco use and its adverse effect, which is also very evident once the data is put side to side with our neighboring countries in Southeast Asia. It is interesting to see that data, and we strongly suggest that you review it for use in your own advocacy, regardless of where you are located. A white paper entitled The Subversion of Public Health Consumer Perspectives was a CAFRA project to provide information and evidence that has not been included in any of the guidance publicly provided by the WHO to signatories and delegates of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control on safer nicotine products. We have questions that do demand answers. When will tobacco harm reduction be treated e equally and held to the same respect as other harm reduction? Other people here today have spoken about wearing a helmet. They've spoken about using um, prophylactics or condoms. They've spoken about seat belts. We all practice harm reduction every day, and nine times out of 10, we don't even think about it because it's become so ingrained in who we are and the lives that we lead. But yet, when it comes to tobacco harm reduction, nope, that's not acceptable. The reality is that the Framework Convention of Tobacco Control is no longer fit for purpose. It has been corrupted. It has been subverted to benefit a few at the cost of the whole and the whole being those eight million people that are gonna die because they don't have options and they don't have choices. 
in order for it to work, the WHO, FCTC to work, is they need to go back to basics. They need to go back to science. They need to go back to evidence. They need to go back to the understanding that you have to acknowledge scientific innovation. You have to acknowledge the consumers, civil society, the stakeholders, okay, and the experience because they're there to help people. They're not there to disenfranchise people or to discriminate against people, which is what they're doing now. It's supposed to be about inclusiveness. And until there is a change, billions of people are going to continue to die. The Manila Declaration was finalized on the 28th of October and was signed by delegates at the conference, as well as the electronic signatures of those who were unable to attend. The declaration is a statement from consumers demanding that WHO delegates represent their interests and the right to make informed choices about safer nicotine. This declaration will be sent to all FCTC delegates in the Asia-Pacific region in the lead-up to the COP10 that is scheduled to take place in November 2023 in Panama. One of the things that we are fighting for, for the right, for the human right, and also for the consumer right to choose. So that's our viewpoint from Thailand. And we envy you, uh, Philippines, that you, are, you already have some kind of regulations because complete ban, complete ban will bring a total black market and you cannot control anything. We try to present uh, evidences and studies that would support that harm reduction is, is indeed an effective approach to public health and improve people's lives. Because right now in India, we don't have much scope in policy framework for tobacco harm reduction. So being here, addressing these issues, taking these success stories back to our country so that we can talk to our policymakers how a neighboring country could make this journey is very important for us. Finally, there was a Q&A session with presenters and the media around the declaration and the forum to give closing statements and answer any remaining questions. Um, yesterday, we had a gathering of uh, like-minded uh, harm reduction advocates as we continue the fight to um, inform as many individuals as possible to hopefully open an eye one day at a time. It was mentioned that 10 Filipinos an hour die from smoking related diseases. We've been here an hour, well we've been here at, well, pretty much an hour, so we've lost about eight Filipinos to smoking since we've been sitting here. So may I ask the panel what it is that motivates them to go to bat and use the science and use your energy because I know none of you actually get paid for this, so what is it that inspires you to be concerned about harm reduction, tobacco harm reduction in particular. I don't want anybody to go through what my brother and I went through watching my mother die. Nobody needs that. I want people to have their grandparents. My kids don't have their grandparents. Uh, like here in the Philippines, how much lower can be the death statistics or long related diseases if people will just use vape instead of uh, cigarettes? I throw back the question to my friends here in media. Every one of us can relate to losing a friend due to cigarette smoking, right? I might not have the exact number, but think about it for a few seconds. Each one of us, I've lost a father because of cigarette smoking. Now I ask all of you to dig deep and see if you've lost a loved one due to cigarette smoking. Thank you for joining us. This concludes the Advocate's Voice for 2022. We will be back in February 2023. In the meantime, we hope that your holiday season is filled with family, food, and love. Until next time, stay safe and be well.